I went too far. But having your walnuts smashed tends to harden you. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. First, a bully mocks an elderly disabled woman. So he gets spammed with fines, for years and years, adding up to thousands of dollars. Next, big bully gets owned, when his victim orchestrates his fake affair, in which he cheats on his girlfriend. Followed by a controlling bully cheater, who cheats on his girlfriend, but finds himself getting deported. Teenage girl gets bullied because of her body, until a vengeful sibling gets revenge by sending the foreign exchange bully home. Before we start, show your vengeful devotion by pulling the like button out of his car, like a GTA character. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to bullies. This is a story about a piece of doo-doo, receiving their deserved karma several years later. Many years ago, I worked in the lovely career of retail. It's sadly normal for there to be a constant flow of shop scum bullies that make you despise their existence. But there are also those that are so horrific that what they do is burned into your mind forever. Fortunately, one of these unforgettable moments allowed me to extract my revenge. I had only worked in retail for one year in this newly built store and was starting to settle in. Getting to know the great customers and understanding that some people shouldn't be allowed outside. Which wasn't the best for me as I'm a shy person who hates conflict. But at least one of my customers was an absolutely adorable elderly lady, who always made time to talk and was an absolute joy to be with. It had been some weeks since I had last seen her but one morning, I see her car park into the disabled parking bay, as she already has a blue badge, only this time she hobbled out of the car on crutches with a pot on her leg. I didn't have a chance to talk to her before I saw a company truck pull into the disabled space next to her. Which didn't have the blue disabled badge. Out jumped an early 40s builder with their teenage kid. Well, this little old lady was having none of this and must have absolutely massive balls of steel. She stood up to this ignorant builder and politely informed them that they shouldn't be parking there, as it's for the disabled and he doesn't have a badge. What happened next I can't forget, this builder decided the best course of action was to humiliate and insult this poor elderly lady in crutches, accuse her of faking her disability and claim the cast on her leg was a fake. He added that she probably milks the benefit system for as much money as possible, then walks off putting on an overdramatic fake limp, laughing away with their teenage kid whilst the old lady stood there in shock. Sadly, being one who lacks courage, I did absolutely nothing about it and it would stick with me forever. I tried feebly to ask a manager later to do something about it, but they didn't care or want to get involved. For years, I worked in this store always seeing this scum builder come in and out. Fortunately, I never interacted with this scum builder but I saw them often and every time I did, I would always remember what they had done vividly. I would still see them park in the disabled bays, and even got to the point where I would recognize them by the large blue Mercedes they drove. Seven years later, I was still working in this store, and this bully scum was still parking in disabled and looking like an absolute dirtbag. I was blessed with good fortune and our store was outfitted with some absolute joyful equipment. Due to the high number of complaints our store had received, we set up an intervention to deal with the parking violations. But instead of having external parties coming in and ticketing cars, the staff of the store were given the ticketing machine and it was our duty to go to the car park and record any cars that violated the parking rules. This was all done digitally, and there would be no paper tickets upon the cars. This was brilliant. As soon as I found out, I knew what I was going to do. It didn't take long for me to learn how to use the machine, and it certainly didn't take long before the opportunity presented itself. And so, the revenge began. There were three rules for parking and if you break these rules, you'll get a lovely 80 pound fine in return, for each time it happened. The first rule, no parking in disabled without a badge. And I know very well that the scum builder is certainly violating this rule. It wasn't long until I saw him next, and as soon as he entered the store, I quickly scurried out with the ticketing machine. Lo and behold, there it was. The oversized blue Mercedes in the closest disabled bay, with no badge. I smashed the car details into the machine with some well-shot photos and sent the report off. All that was needed now, was some time for the lovely letter to arrive at their doorstep. That's not enough though, but fortunately it takes weeks for them to finally receive the ticket, which grants me the opportunity to constantly ticket their parking violations. I'm counting on this because as you would expect, the bully scum would always park in disabled, and as I worked at the front of the store, I would always know when they had parked. 
After ticketing their car dozens of times, the bully unfortunately learnt their lesson, as their oversized blue Mercedes no longer appeared in disabled parking bays. Had this scum gotten enough I thought? Of course not. So as you expect, the scum would still be scum, and they would find their new parking space inside child parking. That brings us to rule number two. Don't park in child parking, without a child. They haven't learnt their lesson and continue to be a complete dipshit and park in the child parking, which we didn't have many spaces for. At this point, I knew all their car details by heart, and would gleefully fill out the ticket machine as I skipped over to their car violating the child parking rule. I would take photos of the inside of the car, including shots of their cat seats that bear no child seats in them. And as it became routine, this once again carried on a few weeks more, of tickets being created and eventually they start receiving the fines. Fortunately, me being me, I am completely invisible to others and often looked over and I have yet to be seen or caught. But as all good things must eventually come to an end, when the scum came into the shop, their blue turd automobile was no longer there in child parking, or disabled. Has the scum finally learnt their lesson? Would you be surprised if they had not? As it didn't take me long to find them. Rule number 3. You must park inside a marked bay. And what a surprise, the scum still manages to mess this up. They would park over the line, taking two spaces up. I'm not kidding or over-exaggerating. Well guess what? That's a job for me, and my ticket machine. Trying to park inside taxi parking but can't fit the big ass car in it? Boom, that ain't inside a marked bay. ka -ching, another ticket and fine to your name. Have one single wheel, slightly over the white line of a bay? Well, guess who technically broke the rule? That's right, Scumbag did. And there goes a few more weeks of fun, until eventually Scumbag runs out of ways that they can possibly break the rules, and our company hires an external party to start ticketing cars. So my beloved weapon of justice goes to rest. Now I know what people are probably going to say, that all these fines are not enforceable, because of blah blah blah, but I honestly don't care for a few reasons. Firstly, I'm being paid to do this, so either way, my time or money isn't wasted. Secondly, it did have an effect, as they repeatedly changed their parking habits. And thirdly, even if they don't end up paying, they are still going to spend a crap ton of the time and effort trying to overturn them, over and over again, having to constantly be harassed by mail. Overall, if all the fines are counted separate and added up, they would have received thousands of pounds worth of fines building up over time, for being scum. Cherry on top about three years later, I walk by this piece of scum on the car park, and watch as they scream at some innocent dude in a high-vis jacket, accusing him for being the one giving them all parking fines. Which put me at peace, knowing this must have seriously got to them and cost them enough, to still be raving mad after three years. A long time ago, I was a young man in an all-boys secondary school, I was about 14 for any international readers, and my friends and I were regularly bullied by a large group of older guys. Being typically nerdy boys, we were prime candidates for bullying. The only saving grace was that we were quite a large group ourselves, so no one person was targeted more than any other. Unfortunately, that didn't matter as the bullying was brutal. On our school grounds, there was a small cabin that belonged to the local Boy Scouts. We used it to hang out around on our lunch break. One day, we had a run-in with the bullies when they tried to steal our football. For daring to not hand it over, I was singled out for punishment, so I was grabbed by four of them. One each grabbing an arm and a leg and carried round the corner, to a small courtyard with a flag pole in the middle. After a few punches for struggling, I was swung backwards and forwards a few times, before being swung legs apart and full force into the pole. Any attempts to describe how painful that was, wouldn't do it justice. Thankfully one of my friends had made a run for a teacher. They were spotted coming towards the bully group by a lookout. Just before they had a chance to take another swing and they dropped me and ran away. I was carried to the school office nauseous and in tears and my mum was called. She found me with an ice pack between my legs, and ghoulies the size of oranges. As she was talking to the receptionist and teacher, my friends ran up to me and passed me a mobile phone. I was confused as I didn't own one and it was at a time when they weren't nearly as common as they are now, and they didn't even have games on them yet. It was an early model Nokia with an LCD screen. I looked at my friend and asked whose it was. He told me one of the bullies had dropped it as they ran off, and he thought that I should have it, as a small way of getting back at him. I took the phone and left with my mum. 
That evening I was in my bedroom feeling sorry for myself and I'd forgotten about the phone in my blazer pocket, until I heard it go off. I took it out and saw he'd received a text message from his girlfriend. This was before phones had sophisticated locks and the bully hadn't set a passcode. I had no idea which bully had owned the phone, but I had his name now at least. I decided to mess with him. I was off school the next day, but when I went back and I talked to my friends about it, and we came up with a plan. One of my friends with a mobile phone was going to message him, pretending to be a guy he'd met recently. We were going to make it look like he'd been having a relationship with him and they were meeting in secret. We carried on sending messages for the rest of the week, and I was also replying to his girlfriend. Although I deliberately made my replies shorter and less intimate than they had been before I got hold of the phone. I'd arranged for my bully to meet his girlfriend in the local town that Saturday, but was planning to stand her up, obviously, whilst simultaneously having my friend text the phone about ditching her, to go over to his town instead. I replied agreeing and said I'd tell her I couldn't make it. But here's the catch, I didn't. I waited in town where we were supposed to meet, and saw a girl walk up and wait for a bit. She then got out her phone and typed a text. The phone went off in my pocket. I left it alone. She waited a few more minutes and texted me again. This time, I walked around the corner out of sight and messaged her back, asking who this was. She flipped out and demanded I stop messing her around. I told her that I had found this phone on the floor of the bus station in that town, and if she knew the owner, I'd come and give it to her, so she could give it back to the owner if she was nearby. She told me where she was, and I waited five minutes before walking around the corner and started looking around for her. Eventually through texting, we found each other and I gave her the phone. She thanked me and we went our separate ways. On Monday I told my friends that we'd pulled it off and we just had to wait, and see what happened. It wasn't long into the week when gossip started spreading through the school. The bully's girlfriend had read his messages it seemed, and had dumped him for having a gay affair. On top of that, she'd done it by going to his house on Sunday and calling him out in front of his parents, who it turns out, were not fans of that sort of thing at all. When he denied it, she pulled out the phone and read out message after destructive message. His claims he lost it over a week ago were ignored, and I was not suspected. In response, his parents went biblically mad and pretty much disowned him, and he was taken in by his uncle who was a little more understanding. He lost contact with a lot of his friends, as his uncle's house was a lot further away, so hanging out after school or at the weekend was almost impossible. And the combination of his cheating and his preference for men was so well known and accepted by now, that no girl seemed interested. As far as I know, his parents never took him back and he moved to London to go to university to escape his reputation at home. I had only expected to break him and his girlfriend up, but that was an unexpected bonus. I'd say it went too far, but having your coconut smashed off a flagpole tends to harden you to the plight of your bully. This story is told from the female perspective. My story happened about 10 to 15 years ago, it's been a long time. It's the sweetest revenge. I was born in the States, but my family members are immigrants. My dad worked his butt off to become a US citizen, working three jobs riding a bike to work, because he couldn't afford a car. He and his dad saved all their money, so they could get the rest of the family here. I say this because I understand the struggles immigrants face coming here. Starting a new life without any support is rough. Before you judge me, remember that I would never do this to someone actually trying to better their life. This piece of crap though, didn't deserve to be here. The story is about my best friend's boyfriend. He lived with her in her family's house renting a room. Driving her car to work and using her cell phone, that her parents paid for. She was 19 at the time. I was about 21. I was working at a club with my boyfriend. I worked really late and I had two kids. I asked my best friend if she could come over and watch them, while they slept. Basically just come hang out at my place. My son was about 6 to 7 years old, the little one was less than a year old at the time. She asked if she could have people over, so she wasn't bored. I said sure as I didn't mind. I asked that she just not throw any parties. We laughed as she agreed. Everything was fine when we got back. I thanked her and she left. Later that night, I saw a cup with a cigarette butt in it. So I text my friend and asked her if someone smoked in the house? I'm a smoker, but because my son is really little and the older one had asthma, I didn't smoke in the house, I always went outside. The reply I received didn't make any sense. The text said, what kind is it? I said I didn't know. In my mind I'm like, there were only two other people here. 
How could you not know if one of them smoked inside? She's not a smoker so I knew it wasn't her. I started receiving more questions, instead of a yes or no answer. The replies also didn't make much sense. It was broken English with stupid spelling mistakes. By this point, I knew I wasn't talking to her. Instead, it was her boyfriend. My best friend is white and he's Mexican. He was trying to fool me so I would tell him who she was here with. By this point I knew for sure that he was a piece of crap. I disliked him even more now. I never liked him before. Not for any specific reason, he just rubbed me the wrong way from the beginning. They have been dating for about a year or two. During this time it became more clear that he was controlling and abusive. I didn't see her as much anymore, because I had gotten into an argument with him at her house earlier that year. We all wanted to go out to a friend's place. He didn't. He said she couldn't go either. She wanted to, but he said no. I told her we were leaving as it was really late, but this Wienerschnitzel made a big deal about it. He decided it was a good idea to wake her dad. So her dad would force her to stay home. This pissed me off because he has no respect for their household. He lives in their home and he can't even let her dad sleep. Besides, she was an adult, not to mention her dad never cared if she was going anywhere with me. Her parents knew if she was with me, she was safe. After that minor blow up, I decided to not be around him. I wouldn't be able to hide my contempt of him. This is why she didn't come over to watch my kids with him. I didn't understand why she stayed with him. Especially after she told me that he forced himself on her. I just put up with him for my friend. I knew if I was around, he wouldn't dare to mistreat her in front of me. But I digress, back to the texts. He's pretending to be her and I confront him by telling him that I know it's him, and talk some more crap. He then said he was going to come over. Blast up my house with my kids still inside. I basically laughed to myself, as I didn't believe him. I replied with a threat to get him deported. I got in touch with a mutual friend, who happens to be my best friend. She knew more about him, and told me he had a warrant out for his arrest. The cops had gone to pick him up one day. But they didn't find him. The family hit him, they hit him next door. My best friend's neighbor was her grandma. I didn't know any of that. I also didn't know his full legal name. She gave me all the info I needed and some more. Apparently, he also had a side chick, so he was also cheating on my friend. I told her what I was going to do, and asked her to keep it a secret. I called the cops and gave them his location. Everything they needed to know, so they wouldn't miss him this time. They actually picked him up the same night. I then called ICE and updated them on the situation. So he was put on ICE hold on. This hold is a request from Immigration and Customs Enforcement to a local jail, asking them to hold the person, until they have an opportunity to take a look for a potential deportation. He couldn't get bailed out of jail now. Once in custody, the only way he was getting out, was when he reached Mexico. I felt bad for my friend and their daughter. I knew she would probably never see him again, but I believe I did her a favor. I ended up telling her what I did not long after. I didn't want her to find out through someone else and get even more upset with me. It's been so long since then, and fortunately, she never said she was mad about it. I'm sure she was mad in the beginning though. But I think she also sees that I did her a favor. Her life has completely changed when he was out of the picture, in a good way. Her daughter has a better father now. Someone who takes care of both of them. He knows it was me, as I didn't hide what I did. And I wish I could deport his booty again. I've moved and when he came back, he was in a different state, because he has no immediate family here. I'm not afraid of him. He got what he deserved. He was a leech for using her personal phone, to talk to a side chick and meet up and have sexy time in the car, that she owned. He also lived in her family's house and more. He would call dips on everything she owned and control her if she needed to use it. The prick lost everything he owned. Lost his girl, side chick and was arrested and deported. Worst of all, he also lost any chance of having any real relationship with his daughter. I did hear that he came back, but it took over 10 years. Their daughter was less than a year old. She's about 13 now. I believe he has met her once since all this happened. He got to see the great life she has, without him in her life. My sister was bullied relentlessly in high school, for something she had literally zero control over. Specifically, it was a certain part of her anatomy. Without going into details, she felt terrible about it and it more or less ruined her life as an insecure 15-year-old girl. 
the girl responsible for most of the cruel bullying, and the one who gave her a particularly cruel nickname related to her physical issue, was called Nadia. Nadia was a foreign exchange student at our school. Nadia was as beautiful as she was cruel. And she didn't give any fricks about anyone else but herself. I wasn't Miss Popularity myself, but I had to protect my sister from having her life ruined, and I felt a very strong urge to get back at her tormentors. They say to kill a dragon with many heads, you got to cut off the main head. So that's what I did. I learned that the father of Nadia was very conservative. Her whole family back home was. So, I started spreading rumors about her being very promiscuous, and ensured these rumors reached the family she was staying with. This apparently caused her some trouble, but I wasn't done. I threw a party one night when my parents were gone. I invited Nadia, who gladly came as I was a cooler older girl somehow, and she never said no to a chance to get hammered. I have to emphasize, there was a lot of liquor. I made sure of that. Took pictures of everyone drinking and having fun. That same night when everyone left, I put it on my Facebook. Tag Nadia on it, she was my Facebook friend. She had this option turned on where everything she is tagged in, is automatically allowed on her timeline. So a picture of her, shit face drunk and very skimpily dressed, made its way to her page. Because of it being the middle of the night, she must not have noticed until the next day in the morning, so it stayed on for hours. But due to her parents' time zone being vastly different, I was sure they would see it before she had a chance to take it down. And they did. I wasn't there to see the fallout, obviously, but she was gone the next week from school and flown back to her home country. Apparently, her parents had to save her from being corrupted or something. So, she was gone. And my sister safe from ridicule. Even safe from other potential ridicule, as word of my involvement spread and let's just say, people didn't really want to mess with her after seeing how far I was willing to go to protect my little sister. You stay till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. I want to take this moment to thank you. I really appreciate you because you bring me a great amount of joy. Subscribe for future uploads and show your vengeful devotion by tickling the like button without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below. I'll join the conversation and I'll be seeing you in the next one.